If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 6. And as you're moving there, I want you to say this with me. I will move forward in faith, not fear. Say it again. I will move forward in faith, not fear. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell Him every detail of your life then God's wonderful peace mm, peace peace wonderful peace coming down from the Father above sweep over my spirit forever in fathomless billows of love. The word says, God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. See, as we stand at the threshold of some new things, I don't know individually everything that you are looking to do or looking to go through or looking to attempt or looking to achieve. But as we stand at the threshold of new opportunities, as we stand at the threshold of new relationships, as we stand less than a month away from a brand new year, as well as challenges that are ahead of us. Today I decree and declare, Joel said, Job said, excuse me, Job said, what you decree on the earth will be established. So I decree and declare today that I will choose to embrace the unknown with confidence and with optimism. Instead of allowing fear to dictate our decisions, I'm going to trust and believe in the potential of what God says is in store for me. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that if God holds it, that it's good. Somebody say, it's good. Somebody say, I will move forward in faith, not fear. Trust and believe in the potential that God has for you. Trust and believe in the new day that God has for you. Trust and believe in the new life that God has for you. Trust and believe in the Word of God. When we nurture a mindset rooted in faith, we're empowered to pursue dreams with determination and courage. When you do that, Every step you take will be guided by the belief that you are capable of overcoming any obstacle that may come your way. When faith, when you put your faith in God as your compass, oh, I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that want to guide us. I told, I told Heather driving down the, the road just the other day, I believe it was yesterday, I said, oh, here comes the election. Because I saw a bumper sticker. Some people got big things on the back window of their car. And I said, oh God, help us. Not because of who's going to get in the White House. And not because who is not going to get in the White House. But God help us through a society that is so filled with fear 
that they've got to get to the pole because if they don't get the right man or the right woman or the right whoever in the White House, we're just going to be doomed. I got good news for you tithers. The word says if you're a tither, he will pour out the blessing. He will peel back. Now the word says open up, but I like the word peel back. He'll peel back the windows of heaven over your head so that you will be blessed. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you get up, blessed when you go down. Not because you're a Republican, not because you're a Democrat or an Independent, but because you're a child of the Most High God. You believe in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're not going to walk forward in fear, but you're going to walk forward in faith. God let us use our faith as a compass. When you do that, you'll be ready to take on any journey, knowing that you have the strength and the resilience to conquer whatever lies ahead of you by the power of the Almighty God. Somebody say it like you mean it. I will move forward in faith, not fear. I will move forward in faith and not fear by trusting in God's guidance. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding or insight. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him. You know what's the problem with a lot of people? They think they're too smart for their own good. And God knew that. That's why he told the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon, to write it down and leave it for us. Amen, Pastor. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Some people need to hush. Honey, hush. Why? Because there's a reason God gave you one mouth and two ears and two eyes. You need to look and listen twice as much as you speak because we need to understand that death and life, Proverbs 18, 21, is in the power of the tongue. I will move forward trusting God's guidance and I won't talk so much that I talk myself into something that's wrong. Amen, Pastor. Thank you. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him. And he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. As we move forward in faith, we must trust God's guidance. That basically means surrendering your own understanding and plans to his. When we submit to him, he promises to to direct our path. Say, Pastor, you preach along these lines all the time. I'm going to keep preaching them that way because that's the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No other way to the Father except by the Son. When we submit to Him, He promises to direct our path. Trusting in God's guidance enables us to move forward with confidence and knowing that He is leading us in the right direction gives us power in the battle. Somebody say, I will move forward in faith, not fear. I will move forward in faith, not fear, while I face the obstacles with courage. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word courage in the dictionary says this, The ability to do something that frightens one. I do not advocate moving in fear, but I promise you, your flesh will be fearful sometimes. Your mind will have anxiety pop up. That's the the bottom line is we live in a world that's fallen and we live in a body that has flaws. I will never say while we're on this earth that we're going to be perfect in all of our deeds. But I will say this. If you are a born again child of God, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you and that is perfection, my friend. So the perfect one that lives inside of you can give you the power to overcome what your flesh wants to do, what your mind wants to think. But you have to take authority and say, I can do all things through Christ that's inside of me and you take the courage to do something that frightens you. 
Another definition says it's the strength in the face of pain and grief. Mm. Moving forward in faith requires courage. Miss Loretta Hawk, a member of this, a faithful member of this church for 20 plus years now. I want to think like 22 or 23, but I know 20 plus at least. She's in the hospital today. I walked into her room on Thursday night. She's 88 years old. I walked into her room on Thursday night. Her son called me. She wanted her son to call me. So as soon as I could break free, I went to her side. And to be honest with you, I've only seen Sister Hawk in situations of church and at home. And she's always a very poised lady. And she was in so much pain. And she was crying and she was squeezing my hand. We prayed, and I all I did, right, I got down on my knees beside of her hospital bed at, at Blunt Memorial, and I just started praying, peace, peace, peace. Peace be still. Do you know what Jesus said when he come up on the storm and when they woke him up and he got up out of the, the, the hull of the, the boat? He was as peaceful as he could be because the God of heaven was inside of him. The storm wasn't inside of him. See, when you walk into a situation and the situation is is less than desirable you have to allow the peace of God that is in you to come out in that room I'm not taking credit for healing but I am telling you that the whole spirit shifted in that room when all I did was I started praying in the spirit and I prayed for peace to come I walked back in her room yesterday she was sitting up she said I ate something today she said do you recognize this one talking about her granddaughter that grew up in high praises church we sat there and we had a wonderful you say what are you saying I'm saying that you can walk into the midst of a storm and if you have agreement and I had agreement in that room you can change the whole atmosphere you can change the outcome you just have to be courageous enough to believe that God is able to do everything he said he would every now you know what I'm believing I'm believing she's coming out of that hospital I'm believing she's going back to her house and I believe that she's going to still be a part of high praises church because she wants to. Hallelujah. Moving forward in faith requires courage. When we trust in God's presence and his promises, we can and will. Somebody look at somebody and slap them and say, I can and I will. You can and you will overcome fear. You can and you will overcome discouragement. When we believe that God is, somebody say God is. If y'all talk more on your own, I wouldn't have to ask you to so much. When we believe that God is with us, wherever we go, we can confront obstacles like sickness, like gallstones, like diabetes, like heart conditions, like ankle problems and knee problems and whatever you're dealing with today. You live in an imperfect body, but you have a perfect spirit living inside of you. You don't have to worry about or think about or have anxiety about where is my help coming from. He's inside of you. Romans 10.8 says, The word of faith is nigh thee, even in your mouth. When we believe that God is with us, we can confront obstacles with boldness and determination knowing that He will give us strength to persevere. Somebody say, I will move forward in faith and not fear. I will move forward in faith and not fear by believing God's promises. Isaiah 41, 10. How many love the Bible? I may get a little weird for some of y'all, but there's been times in my life that I've hugged it because I just wanted to feel him. <laughs> because, see, I believe that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with him, and the Word was him. John 1.1, if you're wondering where that's at. 
And there's been times in my life in the middle of that midnight hour that they were talking about earlier that all I could do was hold on to my word as a point of contact. And that point of contact, see, this is a Bible that, that a, a, a brother of mine gave me in 1991 when I was preaching for the very first few messages. And he, he brought this to me. And I've got stacks of Bibles that I love. I love all my different translations. I love all my study Bibles. But this is just an old KJV Thompson Chain reference Bible. And I like it so much just because <laughs> it's like a symbol to me. Now, if somebody took my Bible away, I'd still have God in my heart. So don't think I'm making an idol out of an object, okay? But sometimes this old flesh, you need to bring it into subjection by, by bringing something close to you and going, you know what? You will hold on to what I tell you to hold on to. You will hold dear to the thing that I tell you to hold dear to. And so much negativity in this world today wants us to believe the lie of the enemy. Wants us to believe the lie of the and the skepticism of fear that we're not going to make it and we're and that the church is going down. Listen, just because there's not as many people in the pews in the statistics doesn't mean that the kingdom of God is not the strongest kingdom. Period. I believe that. I'll always believe that. Because the number comes from the leadership, not the followers. And he's the king. He's already been deemed the king. He'll always be the king. He never started. He'll never end. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And whoever is in his army wins. Isaiah 41 10 says, Do not fear anything. For I am with you. <laughs> Don't be afraid. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand. A hand of justice. A hand of power. A hand of victory. A hand of salvation. See, moving forward in faith means believing and embracing God's promises. I wish I'd have brought one up here with me today. I forgot that's okay. They've got them in the bookstore. I talked about last week how I wish everybody in this, we need to read, pray, and live holy in 2024. See, I believe the Lord has already given me a word for 24. We win in 2023, and I can tell you of the wins that God has provided for us and for me personally in 2023 and my family, but I'm looking for more in 2024. Why? Because He is a God that tells me that I can receive and achieve anything that I'm capable of believing for and I believe that he is a God that gives me the power to speak to mountains I can say to the mountains be removed and cast into the sea and whatever the mountain I'm looking at has to be gone why because he is inside of me and the power that is in me is the very word that I place inside of me I wish every person attached to this ministry would get up every morning of 2024 get your one year reading Bible out fill your hide full of the word of God and then take on hell with a water pistol if you have to but go out and win every day somebody say I win moving forward in faith means holding on to the promises of God and in times of uncertainty and fear we can find comfort and assurance that God is with us. Man, there's an incredible teaching on, on High Praises Church face, or, uh, YouTube channel right now about God being with us. Miss Angie taught it this past week. We've been, we've been uh, talking about it in Connect Group. God is with us. And in times of an uncertainty and fear, we find comfort in the assurance that God is with us. 
He's with us so that he can strengthen us. He's with us so that he can heal us. He's with us so that he can lift us up. He's with us so we don't have to be alone. He's with us so that we don't have to walk in fear. He's with us so that we don't have to be dreadful of the next day. You shouldn't get up going, oh God. You should be getting up going, oh God, it's a good day. By holding on to the word of God and the promises of God, we move forward with confidence, knowing that his faithfulness, somebody say his faithfulness, will sustain us through every trial. His faithfulness will sustain us through every hardship. His faithfulness will sustain you through every marriage. His faithfulness will sustain you through, sustain you through every divorce. Somebody say, I will move forward in faith, not fear. And the last thing I want to give you today, I'm going to move forward in faith and not fear by trusting God more than the facts. <sighs> facts are real in this world, but they're not always truth. Here's the difference. Facts are changeable. Facts are movable. Facts are subject to the surroundings. But the truth will endure forever. Trusting God's word more than the facts. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, come sunshine, shadow, or rain. The one I know ruleth o'er everything. So all of my worries are vain. I'm living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in His great love. <laughs> From all harm saved in His shelter. I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting As we decide to move forward in faith, remember that our walk with God is not dictated by what we see in the natural. But our 
it is it is led by what we know and trust in God's word but I like this better when God gave this to me I wrote it down and I got all excited we do not trust just in the word of God but what backs up the word of God is the character of God I don't trust in the character of man but I trust in the character of God let me tell you just a little bit about the character of God. The character of God, well, he never started, so he can't stop. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. In other words, the character of God doesn't start something and then stop, but he finishes the good work that he started in your life. So if you have not yet seen what God promised you, don't give up. He never said one thing in the word that he won't accomplish in you. If you're not as on fire as you once was, God's not mad at you. Press in, baby. Get back in. Jump back in. Don't give up. If you're wondering, why is my life going in the wrong direction? Let me remind you of something. The word of God says I would that you would prosper and be in health even as your, even as your, what are you thinking about? What are you focusing on? Where are you putting your time? Where are you putting your commitment? What are you, what are you are assigning your dollars to? What are you giving to? What are you pouring your finances into? What are you sowing your words into? What are you putting your time into? You, I would that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I got three more statements and I'm gonna quit. Rely on the reality of God's faithfulness. I'm going to say that one again. Rely on the reality of God's faithfulness. By living according to your faith in Him rather than being swayed by what you see. <laughs> rather than being swayed by what you think. Rather than being swayed by what you feel. If you will rely on the reality of God's faithfulness, you'll move forward into an unwavering confidence and into a faith and a hope that he promised only in the word not to yet be seen in your life, but yet to be known by the word of God. Oh, I say it to you today. If we will hold on, God's will will take you in to prosperity like you've never seen it before. And prosperity, let me tell you something. Today, prosperity isn't just finances. I need to prosper in my marriage. I need to prosper in my ministry. I need to prosper <laughs> in my relationship with my children. I need to prosper in my relationship with the people that I work with the ministers and the people that God has placed around me. I need to prosper. I need, I need Julian to be the best he can be, so therefore I need to feed into him all that I can because I need him to prosper so that I will prosper because he is a part of me and I'm a part of him in this ministry. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not just pointing him out. I'm just talking about who are you connected to. If you're always griping about your wife your marriage is not going to go anywhere pray for your wife serve your wife do good to your husband help your mate if you are worried about your children stop worrying and start serving them tell them how good they look even when they act like they ain't got two brain cells to wrap together they're going through something why well, stand in, in that place of, of praying for them intercede for them I will move forward in faith and not fear by trusting the word more than facts thank you so much for watching this sermon we hope it encouraged you check out more of Apostle Jack's sermons to stay encouraged throughout the week we also do live streams on Sunday mornings at 10 we would love for you all to stay connected so go like and follow all of our socials
Life is so beautiful with Jesus and community. So, so join, join the fam! fam.